question while people are you know throwing in their questions in the ano in the Q&A tab or in the chat box so let me just frame this dur when during the time that Mark discussed empathy um on his sharing about Globe Telecom um apparently so when Mark was discussing empathy was such a big factor with Globe because um their insights from all of the employees were the reason why they are able to easily adapt to the crisis right so kinuha nila yung mga yung mga insights ng mga tao through polls through surveys through help desks and then it's because the leadership has very high listening skills they gathered all of the insights of the people and right now all of their programs are based on those insights so nakita niyo naman diba sobrang ganda ng mga programa nila in fact Tuwang-tuwa yung mga tao na nanood um, sa Globe, about, about the sharings in Globe Telecom because nakita nila na nakaka-inspire na ang sarap palang magtrabaho sa isang kompanya na mataas ang empathy. No? Now, my question is this, um, Cecil and Maribel. Kasi in Globe, apparently, empathy is already high in leadership, especially in top leadership. But that's not the same thing with other organizations, diba? In fact, in a lot of organizations, empathy is not that strong. So my question is, as L&D practitioners or as, L, uh, as HR practitioners, how do we influence the culture of empathy in the organization if top management is not yet that sold into it? Okay. Anyone? Um, like Maribel, do you want to start? Para we can get the ball rolling in the ah, okay. Sige, uh, ako yung one of my biggest insights sa uh, sharing ni Mark is you know, empathy begets empathy. If you show empathy maybe to the people, then people will have empathy on you. And hopefully if management is able to realize na oh, this is good, then maybe they will also show a bit more empathy. Mm -hmm. But we as kung, kung, uh, practitioners should model the way. Definitely we need to model the way. Right. Okay. What about you, Cecil? What do you think? Thank you, Maribel. I mean, that's that's very. That's yeah, very I to I totally agree with Maribel. Yung empathy begets empathy, and uh, siguro in my personal experience. So just yesterday afternoon, I was in a Viber meeting with some of my directors. So the sales director, the purchasing director, and the finance director, and we were discussing some very serious business uh, concerns, galon. So, ang tagal. And then, after I summarized, ended the meeting, di mag, mag -go goodbye na, no? Uh, suddenly, the finance director, you know, told me, asked me, Ma'am, how are you? Alam mo, I, I, I was, you know, I was affected. I was stunned. I was so, uh, at tawag doon, uh, I, I was just so happy to be asked just, how am I? How am I? You know, how, how am I doing? So I guess it's really, you model the way, you know, for anybody beyond the functions, just a simple how are you will go a long way in terms of empathy. And mm -hmm. everybody needs it. Your boss, you know, the people uh, around you, not just your company, the community. So, yun lang. For me, it's just a simple do it. Show it. Do you think there is a because there's a question here from from Luz, no? Um apparently empathy is not built in sa, sa mga tao. And ako, I, honestly, like I've I've done a lot of strengths profile from <laughs> from different uh, from different providers, and I realize that my empathy is not as high as others. So my question si Luz dito, is empathy something we are, we are born with? If we lack empathy, how do we develop it? Sige, anyone who's ready, yeah. Ako, uh, I just want to share a finding, scientific finding in the past, which I came across. Um, you know, even infants can show empathy. When they hear another infant cry, they also cry. So that means it is something innate. But some, somehow, along our development journey, maybe because of some negative experience, we lose that empathy for people. So we can still wake that up if we really want to. 
Uh-huh. Siguro Maribel, let me follow through that question. No? Kasi Emiko Garcia also ano, asked it here. Sabi niya, if, if it is innate, tapos we lost it along the way, if that's the rationale, how do you think we can redevelop it? Um, it's really part of uh, um, emotional intelligence. Hindi ba? Two parts of emotional intelligence is self-awareness and then mm-hmm. awareness of others. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are aware of yourself and you know that you have a lot of issues to resolve, that comprises noise inside. When you're noisy inside, you cannot hear others. So maybe the first thing to do is to resolve some of these issues inside so you can be more em- empathetic with others. Right. So you think that so, we need to look internally first before we can give people empathy because it's like, ano, is, is it some sort of energy that we need to, ex- we need to, ano, we need to share? Well, it's really, yung, yung issues are really cobwebs inside that makes you ineffective. Eh? So you right. need to resolve all of these things first, or at least most of it, mm-hmm. b- before you can actually um, feel for others. Because when, when you're so wrapped up in your own issues, it's so difficult to feel for others. Mm-hmm. I, I love that insight. I, and I think si Cecil has something na to share about it. No? Yes, thank you, Maria. Yeah. Yeah, for me, my personal experience is I'm the kind of person na it's not natural for me to empathize. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you know the uh, alam yung, uh, personality classes, yung DISC, mm-hmm. yung D-I-S-C, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm a D. I'm a D. So people are uh, either more mental or more heart, di ba? So I'm more mental. But um, I guess uh, it can be learned. It can be learned yeah, in, in my case. Learned. I think because I'm in L and D a lot of a lot of years in my life, diba, there's a, a praise in a in a training program that says listen and respond with empathy. So at mm-hmm. first it was mechanical with me, but because I had to practice it in the seminars, in the work that I do, finally I think I'm able to empathize. So right. it can be learned. Yeah. Right. I believe so too. I believe so too. Right. Alam mo, um, that's a very interesting point, no? <laughs> Kasi I want to share to people, and I'm very secure naman about this. I recently took the strength profile. Tapos mm-hmm. yung strength profile showed me that empathy and emotional awareness is just my learned behavior. Meaning, um, it's a strength, pero it drains me when I use it. Mm-hmm. Tapos when I was trying to reflect on myself, um, I realized that... At home, you have a text message. Sorry. No worries. I realized that at home, people don't talk about emotions too much. So parang empathy didn't become a second nature to me. So what happens is that for me, the only time I can empathize is because if if I have something that's within my interest, parang ganon. And I'm sure like there are other people who are like me, no? <laughs> don't have that high an empathy to relate to others. Um, Let me ask this question for you then. Um, Are there steps ba? that we can take so that yung learned empathy na yon will be heightened para it can become more organic and natural for us. Um, I want to pick up on what one of our uh, listeners put in here. She says, yes. you can develop empathy through active listening. Yes. That's true. However, right. even building the skill of active listening, you need to build that also. You start with active listening. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's the mm-hmm. name? El- Elise Ventanilla. Thank you for that input. Hi, Elise. Um, Thank you. So that's one step then. Active mm-hmm. listening, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, maybe an easy way of learning empathy or easier way is to hang out with people who uh, know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> so, mama ka dun sa mga ano, bumarkada ka dun sa mga tao na marunong mag-empathize. Matututo ka. Okay. Right. Oh, man, oh, may role model ka. Oh. Correct. Gusto ko yung gusto ko yun, no? I I mean first gusto ko yung point ni Elise na like you can develop empathy by starting to actively listen. Kasi doon sa example ni Mark sa Globe Telecom, the the empathy rose because people started to respect even the silliest questions. Hmm. So parang ang nangyari was 
Globe was listening to everyone, even if the questions were very trivial, even if the questions were absurd, and they were responding to them. And I think that reflects what Elise was saying about active listening. Na you don't have to immediately say yes to all of it. Tama ba? Pero, pero the fact that people know that you listen and consider their thoughts or where they're coming from, that already matters. Tama? Yeah. 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 That's all right. right. Okay, amazing. Let's read some of the ano, let's read some of the chats na no? nakakatuwa kasi yung mga ano nila. Like I saw Joey, he said, it's really going beyond the task, the output, the numbers, just looking at the employee as a person. O di ba? Sobrang oh, ano, nito, sobrang oh, human. Oh, yeah. Sobrang human ito. Ang question ko dito though is Alam mo ang nakikita ko yan eh pag nasa social media ka, di ba? Ang daming nag-aaway na tao. Hmm. Kasi because of lack of empathy, hindi natin naiintindihan kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ng mga tao na walang pambili ng pagkain, kaya okay lang sa atin na nasa bahay, hmm. mga ganon. O kaya at the same time naman yung ibang tao, hindi naman lang naiintindihan na medyo mahirap din yung kinalalagyan ng mga leaders. Hmm. Kasi yung mga leaders, medyo hmm. mabigat yung kinalalagyan because hindi nila rin alam kung ano yung mangyayari. Um, so yung active listening part na yon na minensyon ni Elise, Paano sa tingin nyo yon masisimula ng tao if that is the most vital step in empathy? Well, when when I teach active listening, I tell my participants to listen both to the verbal and the non-verbal message. So it requires a certain degree of being observant. You need to observe the the uh, nonverbal behavior you need to um, see patterns in the way people talk kasi yeah. sometimes may life theme yung mga tao eh. so yung mga issue nila maitutuhog mo sa isang life theme okay, yung ganun so yun you pay attention to that and again if maingay inside you cannot hear these things right so very important na tahimik sa loob bago ka makarinig kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ng mga tao uh-uh. sa labas. Tama ba? Yes. I, right, right. I, I really love that insight, Maribel. Um, there's another insight here, no? And from Nina, sabi niya, listen to understand, not just listen to respond. Alam mo, sakito ng karamihan. Exactly. Diba? Sakit ng karamihan yan. Ang hilig-hilig ng mga tao na makikinig kasi gusto nilang makipag-debate o kaya gusto nilang mag-respond o kaya gusto nilang isolve yung problema. Di ba? Yeah. <laughs> Pero makikinig tayong tendencies eh, no? Pero yeah. bakit importante yung sinabi ni Nina na it, na, na it, it minsan okay na yung listen to understand eh kahit na wala yung response. Bakit sa tingin nyo importante yun? May kwento ako dyan, uh, a, re- a, a very real story that just happened to us during this COVID-19. Uh, you know, in Club Balay, Isabel, what happened was, uh, di ba, wala nang mga guests. So, uh, nagsara kami when uh, there was yung Luzon shutdown. Talagang wala. And then suddenly, uh, OWA said, you know, we're looking for places to quarantine our OFWs. Ganon. And so they 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 went there to ocular nag ocular inspection. Ayan na, dumating na yung mga ano, mga fake news. In the community where we operate in Talisay, ang fake news is may mga Chinese tourists na ano na magko-quarantine doon, no? So uh, it it created uh, quite a stir. Uh, nag ano na, nag nag ano na yung mga sa social media. They were the community in Talisay were threatening to uh, stage a protest rally in front of our gate. Uh, they were threatening our employees. You know? yeah. And then finally, we were asked by the Sangguni Ang Bayan <laughs> to come. You know, So, uh, we came. We came. And uh, ang lakas talaga ng ano, no? ang lakas talaga ng, ng fear. Even our employees, no, a lot of them wouldn't want to come to work because pinabantayan sila ng mga ano nila, mga kapitbahay nila na kung papasok sila sa balay, hindi sila pwedeng bumalik sa community kasi parang may COVID na sila. Ganon. So, it, it's really uh, when we went to the Sangguniang Bayan, we, uh, we listened to understand like the vice mayor was uh, the head of the Sangguniang Bayan and, and he said, 
kung mangyari na yung mga employees nyo eh, ma-infect, tapos COVID-free pa ang kalisa, and then matrace sa inyo na kayo palang nag-infect, ano naman na mangyayari sa atin? So, yun yung, yun yung, mga cons- yun yung concern nila. So, eventually, what... Uh, ang, ang naging, ano, naging compromise was everybody who works in Balay when we quarantine the OFWs uh, would have to stay in and uh, cannot go out into the community. Okay? And I think the, also, kaya ganun yung fear nila, the understanding was itong mga returning OFWs are more, more likely COVID-infected which they are not. They are just like us. It's just that it's a requirement to be quarantined uh, if you come into the country from out of the country. So, yun. And then, you know, uh, some people, some of our employees refuse to work anymore. And when I asked them, I had to ask them personally, like, especially the housekeeping supervisor refused to come to work. And he said, Ma'am, may anak akong bag, ano, bagong anak. Tsaka yung mga kapitbahay ko, binabantay anak ko. Ayaw akong paalisin. Ayaw akong papasunin sa kanila. Okay, so for me, it's, it goes beyond empathy. It, it's, it's really understanding and compassion. And if we did not listen, if we did not go to Tsangguni Ang Bayan, kung, kung you know, we, we just uh, existed by ourselves, and went ahead with with what we wanted and he hindi sana nagkaintindihan but now you know we are operating at full capacity with the OFWs our people are naka stay in and uh, even the chief of police the medical director they are supporting us and OWA is supporting us so everything good ayun so uh, empathy work especially if you take the next step which is to understand and then to do whatever it takes you know to to get through this crisis for uh, for us to be able to operate okay. Ay, um ang ganda ng story mo sis <laughs> ang ganda ng story kasi Thank you. <laughs> it, it highlights the active listening part and also the compassion of Bal- club la isabel no um kasi tingnan mo naman yung konteksto, parang lahat naman tayo clueless, di ba? Kahit naman sino, parang wala naman yata ang madong sure kung ano talaga yung dapat tsaka kung ano yung tama or mali. Considering that what is happening right now is a bit unprecedented. So, the all the more yes. empathy is, is important kasi yung active listening na yun tsaka yung communication that will go across all of those ways is what will give us clarity of action and decisions. You know, and I think that's also what happened to Globe. Mas naging klaro yung kanilang direction, so yung mga results nila because of that strong empathy has become more concrete, di ba? So mas naging mas maganda yung direction nila, mas naging mas na may measure nila ngayon kung ano yung or mas na may measure or mas na control nila kung ano yung dapat nila i control within crisis because all of them are open to one another and no one is hiding things. That's how I got it, ha. And I think from your story, Ren Cecil, it seems yes. like that's the biggest lesson, no? Like, the only way for us to be able to generate productivity and move forward in combating this thing is if we are very clear and we actively listen to one another. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Amazing. Um, do we have any thoughts from, ano, from the audience? Like, let me... Just read Bea Kilagan's... Um, Kilingan. 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 Bea Kilingan's um, also, she said, this empathy really just humanizes business, putting back the heart um, in bis- uh, on how the business operates. O oh, diba? Nakakatawa naman to. And which yes. is, did you, did you know that, that people, people right now love businesses more because of their authenticity? Mm-hmm. Diba? Because mm-hmm. of their, ano. yeah. um, June Roy, for me, empathy starts and ends with caring for others. If I don't care about the person, empathy becomes a manipulative technique or tool. <laughs> Gusto ko yan. May katotohanan yan. Agree. May katotohanan ito. Okay. Eh, Joey, empathy can likewise stem from gratitude. Consider and appreciate what the person has done for you. For your company, we must be grateful. Quite linked to utang na loob. Right. Mm-hmm. Ang galing, no? I mean, I, I, yes. I, I really like the very tangible insights here. So, so far, 
what I'm getting from empathy is, um, kasi the biggest questions that are coming out here is that how do you develop it, right? And one of the tips that you shared and also some of the people shared from the chat, like sila Elise si Nina, is number one is to actively listen. Tama? Mm. So open your mind and open your company or organization. Look for ways by which you can listen to people. Did you know that um, this whole PSTD learn from home thing, this happened only because we started to ask people survey questions about what they think they needed in order for them to survive this crisis as far as L&D practitioners. And that was why we were able to come up with those three themes. Diba? How to digitize learning, the roles that L&D leaders play, at saka how to support teams during the COVID pandemic. If we didn't ask people about, about how they were doing and what they needed, I don't think we will be able to generate themes. I don't think we will be able to come up with relevant topics. So even if we get good speakers, if we feed it to them and they don't need it, diba? Right. Wala tayong makukuhang manonood, baka lang awin tayo. Pero look at, look at us now. I mean, we are we are at 4,300 um, live views in ano in Zoom. We had around 36,000 Facebook views in total just in a span of three weeks. And our community has grown by 3,000 followers. Wow. And I, that says a lot, no? Like, and that's very simple. The survey was less than 20 items. So mm -hmm. can, you imagine the power of, can you imagine the power of listening to people and then actually implementing it based on what they need in relation to the uncertain times? So yun. I just wanted to share that because I think that that was very, I know, that that was very, in, um, that's one of the reasons why we are very passionate and successful about everything that's happening. So yun. Um, if you don't mind, guys, we can move on to the next topic, right? Go. You are very much welcome, Emiko and Bea Kilingan and Madel. Um, uh, you know, if you answer the survey questions, you will realize that so many people actually have answered similarly to most people's responses. Lahat ngayon naka-digitize the learning. Kaya nga next week, guys, itong advice ko sa inyo, one of the best weeks that we will ever have for learn from home series is next week, right? Yung next week kasi na yon is how to digitize learning and coming from a lot of best practices from GE, from Gaia Insights, from AITD. So mag-register kayo doon kasi libre <laughs> All right? So sige, let's go to the next topic, okay? Tapos nakikita naman ito ng mga tao eh and nakikita ko si Junro eh parang Umipintig na yung tenga niya dahil favorite topic niya ang ano, management system. Susunod. <laughs> Tsaka 5S and Lean. Um, ito, ang, uh, ito ang starter question. No? How do you think we can organize ourselves in an uncertain world? ba? Bongga yung question na yan. Okay. Tingnan natin kung ano yung mga katanungan ng ibang tao. Pero let's start that with that question. What do you think, ano, Cecil or Maribel? Uh, well, because it's an uncertain world, then you may have some anxieties and fears and first you have to work that because if not, it's going to be a distraction. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about what am I what, what will I lose? How can I do better? Right. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, process mo muna yung sarili mo. Uh, nasa na ba ako nito? Uh, at kung malinaw na sa'yo, kung nasaan ka dito sa change na ito, sa transition na to, then you can start organizing. You need to address the emotional issue first before the organizing issue. So you think that the emotional issue is a requirement before you can 5S your surroundings while you're working from home? Oo. Uh -oh. All right. How about you, Cecil? Yes, uh, definitely, just like Maribel, you know, I'm an OC person, eh. Kaya I like this, I know, this 5S and organizing. Um, I, I almost feel guilty that I love the quarantine because it has the gift of time. So you can yeah. rethink, you can reshape your body, you can re-energize. You can do all all of these things na dati hindi mo magawa. You know, the, the diet, that the exercise the the planning the personal planning you no know, you can you can do all that 
And then, uh, sabi nga ni Maribel, after you sort your things, your yourself out, sort out your surroundings. You know, the files, the eliminating, the unnecessary, di ba? So, it's, you know, this this uh, quarantine may not come again. So, make use of it. You know, uh, make sure you you make use of the time that we are given. It's a gift. Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. we can ever come come across an opportunity like this again unless not in our have, lifetime. Oh my god, I can't wish for it. Unless we have a second wave. Not in a lifetime. Sana <laughs> so, wala naman second wave, no? Kasi pag nag second wave, eh na naman. Pero sana wala nang second wave. Sana, sana, sana. Let's listen to the audience naman. So, siguro let's engage the audience some more. Um, what do you guys think about the question? Kasi alam mo marami naman sa atin na Like for example, ako marumi ako tao sa bahay. Like I like the clutter. I'm very organized with my files, pero in terms of my physical surrounding, I'm not. <laughs> so this this five S thing is gonna be very helpful for me. Pero what about our audience? Ano ba yung style nyo? Does being organized using five S help for you? Um, let us know para we can we can allow some people to even ano like even talk. Like if there are people in the audience who want to talk and converse with us, mm-hmm. just raise your hand or kaya chat with us and then we are gonna unmute you para we can hear what you have to say. Because yeah. oh, I really want to learn about this. You know? <laughs> feeling feeling ko if I become more organized, baka mas productive tuloy ako o kaya mas, mas focused. Eh. Anyone from the audience? June Roy, favorite topic mo to. Oh, <laughs> Oh, June, how do you use this concept in your personal life? Sabi ni June, I apply the science of chaos to justify being organized. <laughs> so, so, so si June pala, gusto lang niya yung topic na 5S, but in reality, science of chaos ang kanya niya. <laughs> right? Who else? It, ah, ito, si Nerisa. Nerisa, it provides order, make things simpler. You also realize what's more important to you. I like that, Nerisa. Can you expand on that for us? I mean, is it okay if if we unmute you, or are you the shy type? <laughs> Does anyone know Nerisa? <laughs> no, I'm not the shy type. Okay, so okay, let's okay, unmute. Go. Let's unmute Nerisa. Wait. Go. Wait, um, yeah. Hey, not can you? Yes, we okay, can hear you. Great. Yes. Hi, Nerisa. Hello. No, to me, kasi when the ECQ was um, implemented, to me, that was a, a break for me because there were so many things that I wanted to do on a weekend that for some reason or another, busy with family, I'm not able to do. So before the start of work, Um, and what's interesting is I, I was transitioning into a new job, a new company. So in the midst of the ECQ, so I had to organize uh, my thoughts first. You know, leaving the company, the 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 previous company, and then the very next day moving on to a different company. So I needed to organize my work area, my craft room, um, right. na makalat. So inayos ko yon, and I made it a point that it was. Neat enough for me to be able to concentrate and focus, and in the process, ang dami kong kalat na natanggal. Okay. Uh, and also, what was also important to me was to stick to my usual routine as if I was still working. Right. So right. my routine prior to the ECQ is every morning I wake up as early as 5.30, I go to the gym, I exercise, then I go to work at nine. So. The beauty about ECQ was I w- I managed to sleep longer. I managed to sleep eight hours. Wake up at seven, still do my exercise, and then take a shower and start work at nine. Right. So it's it's so that the routine is not broken, so that I don't get to feel that I'm so displaced amongst all the changes that's happening, and also looking at things that's within my control rather than you know panicking and thinking. Of things that are actually not beyond my control. Right, Nerisa, I love your I love your point on the benefits, no? Especially when you mentioned that that sense of stability and control helps you with some focus, right? Correct. Are there any? Uh, have you realized some tangible benefits that came out of it? I feel more focused. I'm happier. I know that I'm doing things in a more structured, orderly manner. Mm. Um. 
And yun, and I spend time on things that really matter most rather than trying to do things all at the same time. Oh, that's so nice. COVID, COVID was like your compass. <laughs> 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 right? Uh, well, thank you so much, Nerys. Thank I, you. I, I, I learned so much from that. I, I'm going to start cleaning my room tonight. I promise you that. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Let's listen to, I know, like if, if M- Vivo is not shy, Vivo, are you are you okay to respond um by a voice? Because I love your point here. You remove the unnecessary things in your life, grabe. Um, those that prohibit you from being productive or restricts your growth. Yung Vivo is cellphone, de ba? Pero hindi naman tisig ko rin pangalan mo. Hello. Vivo. Ay, kasi hindi pangalan ni eh. Vivo 1920 yung nakasulat dito. Eh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sige. Um, let's let's try another one if if we don't see a response. Um, sabi ni Olin, I like what Nerisa said. Stay to the routine so that we will not feel displaced. Diba? Kasi it, it does feel like that, no? Like when the world is uncertain, medyo hindi mo alam kung nasaan ka or saan mo ilulugar yung iyong sarili. Totoo yan. I mean, yun hindi ka nag-iisa dyan sa ganyang feeling. Um... Maria Cristina Magadia, being productive in the times of ECQ is very important. Yeah, si Olin daw. Gusto mo bang magsalita, Olin? Sabi ni June, hindi ka daw shy. She can share. Go, Olin. <laughs> Paki-unmute na at paki-unmute si, ano, si Olin. O anong benefits sa kanya. Kasi alam mo si Olin, sobrang busy na tao nito. As in, kung nakatrabaho mo siya. Olin, anong benefits sa iyo ng pag-organize? Olin, can you hear us? Ah, her audio is not okay. okay. All right, that's that's okay. That's fine. Can I uh, just say something? Yes, please. Uh, over a few weeks, na isip ko, ito yung yung ECQ na to is the round to it that all of us are looking for. Iba, hindi hmm. <laughs> ko pa nagawa. I haven't had the time. I haven't had the chance to get around to it. Well, this is it. This is your round to it. So, whatever unfinished business you have, this is a really good time to complete it. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Thank you. Um, ang, nakaka- ang nakakatuwa dito sa Shinier ni William in relation to that, Maribel, no? apparently, pro- mukhang proseso pala ang ano, no? Ang pag-organize. So, pagsasort ka muna and then you're yeah. gonna straighten and then shine. Tama ba? Is this a is this a ladder or is it you can you do it like are you is it something that you you do simultaneously Cecil since you're It's a the, process it's a process. It's a process Yeah so you sort first so like if you have a desk at mm. home like I I have you mm. sort it first kung mm. ano yung mga unnecessary throw away the unnecessary in mm. companies red tag tawag doon eh. red tag mo yung unnecessary tapos itatapon mo eh. and then okay. straighten is you organize you you aayusin mo. Shine is walilinisin well, or yung mga sira eh, uh, i-repair mo. Standardize is uh, just standardize the process na, you know, yung madali mong, uh, yung lagi mong ginagamit, malapit sa'yo. And then sustain. That's the discipline. Mm-hmm. Ayan. So it's it's a process. And then you, you do it again in another portion of uh, your workplace. Ganun. Right. Oh, it's amazing. I'm gonna try this out, ha? Tapos, I'm gonna let you know in the span of two weeks if it benefited me. So, uh, we can talk about this some other time. <laughs> okay. Sige, let's move on to you the... You can ano. do it with your wardrobe. Diba? I can do, it, wardrobe. do it with your wardrobe. <laughs> I don't wanna show you. Like, if I show you my, like, my, my, ano, my side, you will, be, you will see, like, all of my laundry are here. They're clean clothes, pero they're just messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um let let's transfer to this very juicy topic. And I'm sure a lot of people are actually um prob- probably have a lot of insights here, no. You know, um since we talked about hem- empathy a while ago, uh I think it's related to this to our leaders. Kasi um ang daming na- nating nababasa online, 'di ba? Like we criticize our leaders because we don't think they're doing enough. We also criticize um, not just in public service, ah, but even in our own companies. Like for example, in in the companies that we work for, 
usually kinokompara-kompara natin eh bakit si Globe ganito eh yung leader namin hindi ganyan bakit si leader namin hindi nakikinig si X company ganito sila um I, I guess I guess we don't know that uh, I guess not a lot of us understand that we are all in that uncertain world and even our leaders are not immune and they are probably they they're probably they probably have more pressure than what we think um, they're in, where we think they're in so my question to everyone and this is not just for Maribel and I know to Cecil is as LND practitioners or HR practitioners or educators how do you think we can help our leaders during this time of crisis? Ayan. Palaliman tayo ngayon dito. Kasi alam nyo, hindi talaga siya madali. No? Pero maybe there's something that we can do significantly either as a cluster or as a community in order for us to help our leaders. Yeah. Yes, do you want to go ahead? You are a yeah. leader. And you might want to tell us, what do you expect from your HR? Oh, that's true. Tama. You're that leader, Cecil. <laughs> oh, nga eh. Well, well, first, yung minention ko kanina, ano, I think that's, uh, uh, you know, beyond the function of HR or L&D, that somebody would just ask you, how are you, ma'am? Diba? After a stressful, me stressful online meeting. So, uh, that, that goes a long way, yung isa, which is what? Showing empathy to the business leaders because we're in a tight situation now. Our industry is uh, one of those that are most severely hit. Um, our survival is on the line. So uh, empathy will go a long way. Uh, but beyond empathy and beyond the job description of HR or l and I think it's uh, understanding what the uh, biggest challenges of business is and uh, and help you know whatever you can do to help that's where you should put your efforts and i don't mean big efforts no i mean like for example when when we face this community misunderstanding my sales director you know uh rose up to the challenge and uh communicated with with this stakeholders no the chief of police the chief of police prevented some bosses from entering uh, sa checkpoint pa lang in ano niya kasi beyond capacity daw no so uh, my sales director talked with him and explained that our capacity is not this but this no so uh, but the damage was done already but the next you know the next uh, batch of uh, of guests ni na yan nas in stock so yeah. you know just just those things my finance director saying how are you ayun no so um, I don't know. I cannot think of big things, yeah. but uh, because it's uncertain, yeah. It's it's we we don't know it uh, what will happen. So one day at a time, those small things that you can do um, regarding the challenges that your business executive is facing that would be very much appreciated. Alam mo, natutuwa ako dun sa response mo, Cecil, no? because apparently empathy rin pala ang sagot um, from where you're coming from. Kasi even leaders need to be heard, especially during this time. Or even leaders need to be asked how they are um, during uh -huh. this time. Hindi naman sila mga superhuman. Alam mo, in, in relation to that, dito ka matutuwa sa response nitong mga ating mga ano, no, audience. Sabi ni Nina, Showing appreciation is also important since our leaders have a lot of responsibility on their shoulders. I know, reading these things, diba? Leaders aren't totally devoid of empathy. Sometimes, si Flary ito, ah, sometimes in trying to appear strong, the empathy within them gets concealed. You have to talk to them and let it come out. Diba? I like that. I like that. Yeah. Eh kasi di ba parang iisipin mo like ako yung mga boss ko dati ang iniisip ko parati is ang hirap nilang kausapin di ba mm -hmm. so, pag sobrang stress na natatakot ka baka mamaya bigla kang um, bigla kang kagalitan ba dahil nga sobrang stress na ano yung ma-advise nyo sa ganun kasi minsan yung mga tao takot lumapit din sa leaders eh yeah so, wait, maybe so... not just you know not just leaders in your organization but in our case you know we were dealing with the uh, chief of police of Talisay, who is a leader in the community. Yeah. The vice mayor of Talisay, who is a leader in the community. And understanding their predicament, you know, yeah. understanding what they're trying to do. 
So siguro yun, it, it helps a lot. Empathy pa nga rin. It's not a strategy. It's mm-hmm. not something, you know, a, a model or something technical. It's really just human relations. Yeah. Right, Maribel, sorry, you were gonna say something. Yeah, well, I agree Oy. with that uh, very, very much because our bosses are also human. We, we just need to maybe find the right time to ask the question. And I think yung staff ni Cecil, Cecil ask the question at the right time. Kasi, right. Yes. you know, and you have to also feel your way. Uh, does the boss look like he's responsive today? Or is the boss yeah. wrapped up in his own issues today? Yes. Right. Ay, meron akong gustong ano, pwede, can we hear from G. Gatdula? Ang sobrang ganda nung sinulat niya rito and I wanna understand also for her to elaborate. Um, sabi niya, HR and L&D sheds light to the leadership. It is normal for leaders to think of numbers and sustainability of business, but HR puts human and humanity back in pivotal focus. Um, G. Gatdula, nice. can we hear from you? Your answer is like, just smack in the middle of everything. Ang galing. Nat? Is, is G here? G, can we, can you, ayan. Hello. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Hello, G. Please elaborate for, ah, sobrang ganda nung sagot mo. Natouch talaga ako sa kanya. Um, that's based on experience, sir, because um, I'm working now for Dusitani Manila. Okay. I'm, I'm the training manager and we are part of Department of Tourism's uh, list of hotels allowed to operate during the ACQ. Right. And this, yeah. this comes from a personal experience wherein I ha- we have to balance between the people and the management. Because mm-hmm. times like this, hindi na talaga sustainable yung business. Eh. Parang kung hindi dahil sa mga displaced OFWs and seafarers, we, we won't be having business Kaya yun lang minsan yung naiisip nung GM namin. Our GM is Chinese. So oftentimes, parang puro numbers yung nakikita niya. But at the same time, I think the HR is, uh, has the responsibility to remind the leadership that uh, we, we too should care for our people during right. this time. Can, can we ask, uh, can we ask G, how, how do you do that? Like, are, do you have tangible examples by which you show na HR is actually exhibiting more sense of humanity so that the leadership will be able to, you know, reflect some sort of humanity within its employees? Um, one thing that we did, because we are housing our staffs who are part of the skeletal workforce, hindi na namin sila pinapauwi because mm-hmm. DOT does not allow us to do that. So right. just like what you say kanina, yung simple chika-chika during breakfast or lunch, we, we have more engagement sa aming cafeteria during this time. And, right. and people appreciate that. Yeah. They, they feel, mas nafe-feel kasi nila yung authenticity eh. when, when, yeah. when we talk, when we reach out, no matter the culture, no matter the position. Kasi sabi nga nila, it's an unprecedented time. So... It's really hard, but that's our coping, one of our coping mechanisms. Right. Thank you so much ha, for sharing that. As in, sobrang ganda ng example mo. Sorry, how do we call you? I'm sure G is not your name. My name is Gilbert. It's my Gilbert. first time to attend uh, a webinar or chillax here in PSTD. Oh, I hope you're learning so far, Gilbert. Thank you yeah. so much for your insight. Thank you. Thanks. Um... Sige. Do you have any ano, uh, siguro comment or response on that, Cecil or Maribel, while I'm reading some of the other insights? Uh, no, but I'm interested in what Nolan has to say about this. I met Nolan many years ago. Nolan said, as educators, oy, gusto ko to, tawagin natin si Nolan, ha? We Sige. need to provide our leaders' decisions with speed over precision as the situation is changing by the day, even by the hour. Nolan, can you help us expound on, on your point, especially now you're coming from an educator point of view? Go, Nolan. Hello, Nolan. Nolan. Wait, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to reclaim the answer. Okay, do you hear me? Ah, yeah, no. Yes, now we hear you, go. Okay, okay. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Oh, my insights here. Uh, yes, we need to provide a speedy decision than pre- precision because 
we are talking about lives here of our people so we need to act immediately or else sabi nga nila aanhin pa ang damo kung patay na ang kabayo that's yeah. all correct oh, thank you thank you so much for that insight thank you ayan um we also have June Roy eto si June Roy alam mo sobrang bulleted yung tips niya ha so pakinggan natin to sabi ni June, some things we implemented in our company. Number one, we coach the leaders how to coach. Number two, employee resilience program. Number three, work from home productivity monitoring tool. Number four, providing menu of learning from home courses for their people. And number five, kamustahan sessions. June, we're gonna unmute you if you're still here. Can you talk about um, one of the five things and what do you think is the most impactful amongst the things that you're doing to support your leadership? Oh. Hi, everyone. My name is Junra. I'm part of PSTD. Can you hear me? Yes. Hear you. Yeah, all right. yes. Uh, first, let me just answer uh, straight to the point, the question, uh, how do we help our leaders during this time of crisis? So. Uh, not only with our company, but in uh, within Avoitis Group and within Union Bank Group, where we are part of. So first, let's understand what is the need of the leaders during the time of crisis. One, they are also human, so they have their human needs. So the Kumustahan session uh, is part of that. Right. So I'm directly engaged with the uh, you know kino kumusta sila. How are they? Uh, how they are struggling along? How they are coping? So that's one of their needs. So we have a program to deal with that. Their second need as leaders is whether or not uh, it is pandemic or normal, they are still expected uh, to deliver results. Right. So, and the results will always come from their people who are also struggling to cope up with the pandemic. So what we did, uh, not only with PetNet, but in the entire Avoidance group is we take care of that need. Uh, so we continue to provide uh, salaries for our people, uh, even if uh, they're not able to go to work because it's not their fault. Second, uh, the principle of Union Bank Group is nobody gets left behind. So our frontliners, we provided them, uh, we call it Ubuntu subsidy. Uh, Ubuntu is like you know, African philosophy of uh, being connected together. So we provided them financial support including our non-employees who are uh, supporting us, our utility persons. Yeah. And then those who requested that they can sleep in our uh, office. So we provided them accommodation and we provide them uh, food or allowances. So what we're saying here is we provided first the human needs of the workers and the employees because the need of the leaders to produce results depend on those people. Mm -hmm. So if somebody gets sick, uh, we automatically provide all the support that we can. So uh, again, two needs of our leaders that we can support. Uh, their need as a human and uh, their need as uh, leaders who have to still produce. Yeah. And so those, uh, that's the context why we have to put up those uh, uh, those kind of programs like coaching for example i want to zero in on that so we taught our coaches on face-to-face uh, -face before but this is a very different uh, environment so we engage them in uh, several coaching uh, sessions so that the same experience that uh, they had uh, they will have with us they can also share so that they can also coach uh, their people in a virtual environment so right. Uh, there are so many things that we can do, but the bottom line is understand first the need of the leaders in this time of crisis, and then come up with a program that zeroes in on those needs as humans and as producers. Thank you so much, June. Um, that's so um, parallel to what BBI is I know, advocating. Right? BBI always talks about people having practical and personal needs and how both of them are, um, you know, um, stand hand in hand. So we don't have that much time, guys. And I'm, I really appreciate uh, that you have a lot of insights. Um, let, me, let me just um, start to highlight some of the things that we talked about, no? para like we can retain some important matters. 
So in empathy, I think one of the things that was highlighted was the idea of active listening, how important it is for us to um, always lend an ear and heart to everyone, considering that all of us naman are in the same place of uncertainty. So simply listening, not necessarily to respond, will actually go a long way. And to Cecil and Mary Bell's point, the importance of transparency and open communication, since all of us are confused as to what's, what exactly is going to happen in the next few weeks or days, will make us make better decisions because we're getting direct hands-on experiences from individuals if we open our communication lines. So that's one of the most important things that I got from empathy. Dun sa how to organize ourselves in an uncertain world, one of the main learnings that I got and that was highlighted here is that first Marie Bell said na look at yourself first. You sort yourself out. You look at your emotions. How are you? Um, and see whether or not you can organize all of your emotions so that when you're focused enough, then you start to sort out your environment. Because this, having ni Cecil, is a process. You sort first. You strengthen. Um, you shine, standardize, and sustain. And this has, ha this has to be a habit, especially that sustain is on the far end. And the last part, the last part, which I think is the most, one of the most important parts here is that I think we have to understand that leaders just like us are, you know, just beings, trying to exist in an uncertain world where that's very unprecedented, you know. And sabi nga ni Cecil, and sabi din a lot of the people who shared in the chat group, um, sometimes all it takes is to ask them how they are and to provide them with the emotional validation because they too need to know whether or not they're doing the right things. And you, you telling them that they are doing them the right, uh, that they are doing the right things or the wrong things are great feedback to see that they are, you know, moving towards the right direction. Um, Siguro before we go to the last activity, let's ask Maribel and Cecil some final thoughts about the ano no about about this whole recap. Anyone who would like to go first? Yes, you want to go? Okay. Um, I've said it before, but uh, we're in a crisis, so everybody's afraid afraid of losing their job, losing their business, losing money, losing livelihood, or even losing loved ones to COVID. So. Uh, just be kind. You know, just just be kind. That's number one right. for me. Okay. Thank you, Cecil. How about you, Maribel? Um I guess this is not while this the situation is unprecedented, we've gone through our own personal crisis in the past and we've we've succeeded to come out of it alive. So we just have to keep this in perspective that this too shall pass. Thank you, Maribel. And let's learn from the people in the room. No, Thanks, Cecil and Maribel. Let's le learn from people in the room. Um, so guys, you see this um, QR code or short URL. Can you, please, can you please use your phones or devices to go here? So it's either you type on your browser the short URL, yeah, short URL dot at slash QCM154, you scan the QR code. Tapos share with us your biggest takeaway from this session, right? So for example, these are people who already shared theirs. It will lead you to one of our Facebook posts. Um, and we would appreciate it if you can put your learning there. Like kahit now or kahit a bit later. Because more the more people that will be able to read your learnings, like for example, the ones that were shared by Gilbert Canina, the ones that were shared by Flary or Nina, um, even Joey, that will go a long way for people who were not able to attend this session. Diba? So please, can you, uh, I'll give you one minute or so to go to this page through the URL or through the, through the QR code. Tapos encode something. What was your biggest takeaway from the series? Uh, it's either from the whole Learn From Home series or just for the day. Para more people will also learn from all of us. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll 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 let you guys I know. I'll let you guys answer for a bit. I know there's 20 people here, so I I'm in Facebook right now, and I can see if you're answering. <laughs> Let's see how. Huh? 
can anyone go to the page ba? Ayan. Okay, mukha naman walang problema, no? Like, people can see the page. Okay. Oh, Luz, thank you so much for coming. And thank you for, ano, for, for sending us messages to guide us what we're supposed to do along the way. No? Um, guys, this is the first time that Maribel and Cecil did this. So please, let's congratulate them for such a you know, job well done. Hello. Thank you so much, Cecil and Maribel. You're yeah. welcome. We enjoyed it too. Oh, oh. Oh. Tsaka, ano, no? I mean, these are... I mean, I'm, you do this face to face, and you, it's very organic. Na when whenever you whenever it's face to face, you already know that this is your strength. You already know that you can make people feel great and make people learn things based on these concepts. Pero it's is it a different setting when you're online? That's when you're, right. it is no. Yeah, yeah. How different is it, Maribel? I mean, if you can share to people so that they know na it's not something to be afraid of. Uh, I'm so used to seeing people's faces. Um, I do process observation of my group. But here, you have to rely on the reactions in the chat box yeah. and uh, the Q&A. So, yeah. yun. so the more uh, comments you see in the chat box, the chat box, the more inspired you are because oh, they're there. They're listening, they're reacting. Correct. Eh, kasi syempre, as a trainer, we're used to feedback, eh, no? Diba? Like, parang we can see immediately the people who are, um, for example, who are making facial reactions or who are very happy with what we're saying. Pero dito, ang weird, no? Parang nangangapa ka kasi minsan nagsasalita ka ng diretso pero wala kang nakukuha. <laughs> <laughs> parang may bumonolog ka, ganun. Until mag-chat sila, which is really ah. great. Kasi ang ah. Filipinos are generally very good with feedback. Yeah. How about you, Cecil? How was this? How how's this first experience for you? You know, actually, I'm I'm you know uh, I'm very thrilled with the technology. Um, I'm not a very young person, but when this internet started to happen, I become I became so excited. So, um, I think we will uh, uh, learn from this, uh, make it better, how to make online meetings. But I I like it because it it. Uh, you know, it transcends barriers of space and time, diba? Anybody from uh, anywhere in the world can, can uh, come in. Uh, we don't have to go through the traffic of Metro Manila. So I, I, I love it. I love it. Right. And nakakatuwa, no? Because like we're cutting across different places. Like ordinarily, we had... We were not able to reach people from Visayas in Mindanao because a lot of us are concentrated in our jobs in Luzon. Pero if you see like the hundreds of people who are tuning into our programs, a lot of them are calling from Mindanao, a lot of them are calling from South Luzon to Bicol, from Cebu. May mga abroad pa nga, may nakita akong Mexico at saka, wow. at saka Thailand. Yo, and diba? Ang ganda, ang ganda. How amazing is that? <laughs> And it's, I mean, I, 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 I will not want to wish this um, on us again. I mean, the situation because of, you know, people dying and also people having a hard time, especially if they don't have the resources to feed themselves. But I think the what Diana Kaitova said during one of the sessions, uh, second session actually, is that um, let's, not, let's not put a good crisis to waste, right? Diba? I mean, ang nakita niyo yung mga feedback kanina, like yung feedback ni Nerys, na it it took the crisis to make her reorganize her life. Um in the sense that she started to organize her stuff, she had started to make better schedules and all of that. Tapos she became more focused and productive. We don't get that a lot, no? Kasi parang every day, every day what we're just doing is um we are we're always troubleshooting and firefighting. Naramdaman niyo ba 'yon? <laughs> <laughs> pag nasa ano tayo no pag nasa normal na buhay talagang parang wala na tayong oras to step back right so let's start to read some of the comments so Flary said one of her main takeaways is that leaders aren't totally devoid of empathy sometimes in trying to appear strong the empathy within gets concealed um, you have to talk to them and listen to them also and let that empathy appear Melanie Servo take advantage of this period to process and sort yourself Cultivate empathy and put it into action by reaching out. Oh, nakakatuwa. 
Kasi ito nga si Gilbert, Gilbert Yadula. As we are living in unprecedented times, HR and L&D sheds light and inspires hope to the leadership. It is normal for the leaders to think of numbers and sustainability of the business, but HR puts human and humanity back into focus. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong mga responses. I hope you can share more of your learnings. Remember, um, we are blessed that we have so many volunteer speakers like Maribel and Cecil are volunteer speakers. The 12 classes that we've done so far for all of you uh, are volunteer speakers. So be very generous on the learning. Be very generous on whatever it is that you can give while we are in ECQ or in GCQ because you will never know when you are touching the lives of other people. And so far, apparently, we are touching a lot of lives today, just reading through your comments. And we're very grateful and happy for that. So maraming maraming salamat po for tuning in to us. It's Labor Day, it's a holiday, but we had 30 plus people in the room and we had great engagement. We will make sure to save your chat messages. Just keep your learning, uh, your learning and your comments going and join us in the session next week. Kasi the session next week, I'm telling you, I will join all of it because that's one of the ways by which you can help your organizations digitize learning better. All right? So, okay. maraming salamat again, Cecil, Maribel. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat na nandito. Magkita-kita ulit tayo sa isang linggo. And hopefully, you can help PSD din become, member, uh, become members of PSTD, ha? Because we our funds are limited attend our paid sessions mainly because we will also need resources to deliver more, more of these great things for people. All you have to do is to go to www.pstd.org and the lowest part of that page will show you how to be a member. So please apply to be a member. We will be grateful and happy to have you because not only are we embracing the community, as they come because of the capabilities that come with it, we also need the money. So thank you so much for your time and mabuhay po kayong lahat. Happy weekend.